So we're glad you're here. Um, this session will be a little bit different in that we have sort of a trailer for what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to play it in a second. It's a video. And then uh, we'll go over the agenda. And I think it'll be a, a lively discussion. And we'll do Q&A at the end. So as we're going through this, if you guys have questions, just think of them. And then at the end, we'll have people coming around with microphones. And we'll get your questions. All right, so with that, the trailer. Working with Appian has been a pleasure. The energy that's being brought each time we engage with Appian is excellent. I'm Michael Parks. I'm Director of Procurement for the Texas Department of Public Safety. We're an organization that shows commitment to the safety and well-being of all Texas residents. My area is responsible for the acquisition of all the goods and services that is used by the agency. Prior to working with Appian, we put together our contracts in a very manual process. It was a pain point for individuals who needed the information, having to go through procurement and contract to retrieve the information. After acquiring the Appian system, our awards are now automated. We have a repository that we're able to utilize without the intermediary. And you have one system where this information is viewable that our stakeholders are able to access on a daily basis. I'm a specialist leader at Deloitte and I work within our supply chain and network operations group. I've been with Deloitte nine years. I've been working with Appian eight. We were really proud to be selected to be their choice for the contract management system that they were looking to build. We had the opportunity to actually demonstrate the Appian solution. Their engagement and their understanding of their role as a product owner was really critical. Changes are identified and they're able to incorporate them into the solution, typically within a sprint. Every time those changes are adjusted, there's increased confidence by the user community. The turnaround time is much quicker. It's allowing us to clean up the underlying data that's associated with the contracts. And that's been that this is a game changer. I thought low code was gonna be something difficult to grasp. Um, but as we're maneuvering, we see that low code is easier for configuration. It's expandable, it's scalable. It's kind of raised the bar in terms of projects, uh, how they need to run. It's established some best practices for us. We had a minimal viable system within three months, but five months we have the functioning system that we have. And what that's allowed us now is to plan for enhancements and upgrades. We're now ready to move into the next phase. It doesn't limit what we can do in the future. So that was our, our quick trailer, our introduction to the Texas Department of Public Safety. Why did we do that? Because I think it, it's a great video, one, and it also sort of exemplifies what Solutions does. It gives you a kickstart on building your application. We just did a kickstart on building this panel. Because you already know about Texas Department of Public Safety. You know the individuals. I will bring them up if you're, if you're worried that there are no panel uh, guests joining me today. They didn't ditch me. <laughs> They'll be up in a moment. Um, I do want to go over a few slides first, just to sort of level set, and then we'll go right into the discussion with Texas. So I want to look at um, what are Appian solutions, and then specifically our acquisition solutions, and then we'll, join, uh, we'll have the panel join me up here. So the first part, and I, I think you've probably seen this slide, I think we had it on the main stage. This is the Appian platform, and I always like to, to talk about how all of our solutions are built on the Appian platform. They're not a different piece of code. Um, they are solutions that we have configured on top of the platform, just like our other customers who use us outside of acquisition have configured their solutions on the Appian platform. I think of these as the tools. These are the tools in the toolbox. And if you were, uh, joined us for the main session, you know that I'm very passionate about these tools, and each one of them speaks to me in a very acquisition type way. But it's items like having the records, so we can show you that requirement or we can show you that award, having the inner uh, connections with, with um, APIs, so we can bring connected systems in. We can have that data fabric, so we can connect to all those external systems and bring them into that single pane of view. The group structure, so we can have that security set up for all of your different personas that are in your, app, in your acquisition applications. Uh, then the, the automation with AI, with RPA, intelligent document processing, being, to, being able to bring all of those tools into our acquisition solutions and be able to tailor them for your organization. So this is, this is the uh, tool set that we work with, and these are the solutions that we have created with that tool set. 
So I just wanted to, again, briefly go over those in case you, you didn't see the morning session where we talked about them. And then specifically, award management is the solution that Texas Department of Public Safety implemented. So that'll be the one that we spend the majority of the time talking about today. But we do have five solutions. We affectionately call this the family picture. And marketing actually said, wouldn't it be great if you could like have it dressed up in, in holiday stuff and it'd be like a card? And I was totally on board with that, but we ran out of time and weren't able to. But if, if in your mind, if you can imagine some of these in an ugly sweater, that's how I see them. And the newest solution is the na na naive one. Vendor management has like a goofy smile. Anyways, that's, that's what's in my head. So every presentation I do has a classic overshare. Uh, so let me talk about them really briefly, and then we'll have the panel come up. So the first was requirements management. And this is a pain point that we heard from so many organizations that were having trouble um, gathering their requirements, getting that really solid requirements package. A lot of the program offices were saying, we don't buy a lot of things. So when we have to do it, it's very confusing. I, I don't really know the process. I don't know what's required. Also, I don't know what's required based on the type of thing that I'm buying or the dollar figure, and it seems to change. I submit one document, it gets rejected back, I have to submit a different document. So we created requirements management to help demystify that process. But for the contracting side, how does it benefit them? They get a much better requirement package earlier. So they don't have to go back and forth for months, which means the end users are getting that good or service that they need much, much faster. Award management, um, also an area that we were hearing concerns from both program office and from contracting. So we, even though it's award management, we still very much want the program office involved, often the core, to have that visibility into their contracts. We were, we were often surprised when cores would say to us, I don't really have a good idea of the inventory of contracts that I have that's delivering on this program, especially if it's a big complex program where I have multiple contracts from multiple different vendors. So award management gives cores access to that data, but then it also gives contracting access to all of their contracts. It's not just now a document that you have in a stale repository that doesn't do anything in terms of notifying you or bringing in process. All this data comes alive. It alerts you proactively when you have period of performance dates that are coming up or when you have uh, funding issues, or maybe not issues. We, we want to have the funding um, shown to you before it becomes an issue. So if you're doing incremental obligations, you can keep adding money to that contract before your vendor shows up and says, hey, we're out of money. Uh, the next one is source selection a process that probably everybody in here is very familiar with. From the vendor side, we're used to submitting these proposals. And from the government side, they're going to take all those proposals and they're going to evaluate them. And we want to make that process easier. We want to bring the evaluators into the system. We want to be able to monitor the entire process. So you, as contracting, would know exactly where those evaluations were. As an evaluator, you'd have a central place that you could go where you'd see all of your tasks and you'd have all of the documents at your fingertips. And then as you do your evaluations, as you complete those evaluations, you need to do your consensus rankings. We could pull all that information together and show that to the teams so that could do their consensus process and then move forward with creating their memos for their, their source selection decision, getting those memos approved and moving forward with the award. Clause automation was the next solution. Um, this came from a lot of frustration from mostly contracting. This one's probably the one that's the most focused on contracting. And that is the process of taking those 500, 600, 700 clauses that you have from the FAR, the DFARs, your agency supplements, and allowing you to go through the process of selecting them by having a guided interview. Ask you questions about that solicitation reward that's going to guide which ones are included and which ones are excluded. So you can have a very, um, you can have confidence in that clause set that you've selected, and it's a much more efficient process. And then as updates are made, they come in automatically, because we've integrated with sources like acquisition.gov. So when there's a FAR change and that clause comes in, and you already had it in your clause set, it notifies you. If you have fill-ins you need to fill in, it helps you fill them in. It also notifies you if you've forgotten any of them. And then finally, the baby of the group, vendor management, uh, our most recent solution. We showed it on the main stage, uh, thanks to Kelsey. Um, this one I'm really excited about, because all the other solutions we're dealing with, contracting and all the different personas within the government that make up the acquisition process, but we weren't yet taking into account the vendors, which play a large part in that. Early market research, where there's a lot of collaboration with your vendors as well as the opportunity and the source selection and the, and the providing of proposals. And then we're going to broaden that even further to also include post awards. They have access to an award dashboard where they see certain information. They can submit documents. They can receive tasks. They can have messages that go back and forth with contracting. So we really want to make it full service for both contracting and the vendor community. Remove all that communication from email because we feel we can automate a lot of the process and we can streamline it. We can save both vendors and contracting a lot of time. And hopefully we can also increase vendor participation along the way because they'll be using new tools, tools that don't look like they were created 25 years ago. So that's the acquisition suite. Happy to answer any questions afterwards about any of those solutions. As I mentioned, though, the remainder of this will be focused on award management and the Texas Department of Public Safety. 
So we're on to our panel discussion. I will invite my panelists, if they're still willing, to come up here. Wouldn't it be awkward if they're like, I'm not going up there. I'll invite my panelists up. Thank you, Jasmine, Gail, Michael. So what did you guys think of the video? I liked it, except... I had a really bad hair day. Yeah. I'm going to have to pause it to show my parents I was in it, though. That's awesome. So I was in it for like two seconds. I don't know if you noticed that. Everyone up here <laughs> featured. <laughs> I was in it for just a brief clip. And that, I thought that, your hair looked fine. I was worried about my hair. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk to you about that, but anyway, later. So we did a session at Appian World. Gail, you were not there. You were on COVID protocol, is that right? Yes, COVID protocol. So we had a great fill-in from Deloitte. Jake filled in for you. <laughs> what was He's out there somewhere. Yeah. We've, we've crafted different questions, though. And what I like about these are, this is actually suggested by, I believe you, Michael, with Jasmine's approval, because that's yes. how it works within your organization. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to talk more about how you came about knowing that you needed a system and the process you went through actually acquiring a system, which I think is, is really interesting and will be great for the government audience as well to hear the process that you went through yeah. and how you made the selections. So my first question is for you. How did you know you needed a system? How was that determination made that now is the time that we're going to go out and get that new system? With state government, we go through what's called a sunset, where an independent agency comes through and decides whether your agency is still viable uh, as an entity. Well, part of their review and looking at the viability of our entity was how we manage contracts. And I don't believe it was written this way, but it indicated there is no contract management. Uh, they may have said something like poor contract management, but it ultimately said there's no contract management. There was no centralized repository. There was actually, uh, it took several months to retrieve information that they were requesting to do their evaluation. And as a result of taking several months to something that should have been readily available, it was determined that we needed to move away from uh, what at the time was considered an advanced repository, a shared drive and SharePoint, to something a little more automated, which uh, was the actual need or the actual uh, catalyst for this. But in addition to that, there were several contracting issues within the state of Texas uh, that reached the legislative awareness and as a result laws were implemented that indicated you needed to do a better job of tracking all your contracts. Yeah, and I think we've heard similar things from other agencies be it federal or state. I did have one follow-up on state though so not a federal agency you don't follow the FAR but do you have certain regulations that you then have to follow when you look to buy new software? Absolutely we have to follow all our automated software, all our AIS uh, has to go through first a threshold test and we have to go through our Department of Information Resources and within the state of Texas it's been decided that a centralized area would gather a group of contracts together similar to the uh, GSA 1122 program. They would uh, gather a group of contracts that they're, they considered are viable for the solution. And we are then to uh, put, a, put through a pricing request or a request for quotes from these entities that are on DIR. And, uh, and DIR is your contact vehicle, right? Yes, DIR is the information resource vehicle that all information system has to be the start of. And then, if we can't locate it on DIR, then we have the opportunity to do it open market. But DIR is our first source, and we have to go through the process of going with approved DIR vendors. All right, yeah. So follow-up question for you, Jasmine. What did market research look like? And 
market research is my favorite part of the process. So in my own household, we've instituted market research. So I'm curious <laughs> to understand how State of Texas does their market research, because it's the way that I delay both my wife's purchases and my kids' purchases. Like, <laughs> there is a market research process we must go through. It's so different. And huh? did you get three quotes? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so actually what we did is we conducted um, an internal like stakeholders meeting. That's the first step we took. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, we gathered that we needed to combine a group of contract specialists that were specialists, you know, specialists in that area. Um, and from that, we, those contract specialists took um, the lead in doing research with other government agencies across the U.S. to figure out what was needed. No. What was the benefit? So that's what that looked like. And as part of that process, did anything stand out for this particular acquisition? Anything notable? I would, I would say so, that a lot of the research consisted of homegrown um, systems or software, if you will, um, yeah. mm -hmm. configuring around their share points or their, their database, whatever that may consist of. So um, that's, that's the outcome of yeah. what, we, what we, we saw. Okay. And, and Michael, back to you. How did you then approach developing the requirements for it? Looking at the statutory requirements and looking at what we needed policy-wise within the agency and also looking at uh, what was not out there, uh, we decided that we needed to be able to archive, access, uh, modify, do amendments, and based on the business processes, we then developed requirements. We didn't want to just automate uh, manual processes. We wanted to develop or acquire a system that would allow for workflow management and uh, primarily visibility and uh, transparency through the whole contracting process. So our requirements were based on primarily that. Yeah. And which stakeholders did you involve? Were you able to involve? Sometimes you want to involve some and they all have day jobs and, and you're not able to get that input. What did, what did that look like? Well, the, f our original stakeholders uh, were based on the requesters, uh, our chiefs. Our structure is set up where we have our executive uh, level, which is made up of the chiefs and the deputy directors of the agency. And the requirements in uh, gathering with them as the stakeholders, because they're the ones that ask the primary questions about what's going on with the contracts, what's happening. So utilizing the questions that they would ask of the procurement and contracting staff was one way of engaging them as stakeholders. And then we actually went to the, utilize the contract monitors and contract managers within the agency and the procurement staff to look at uh, from the business process side what they had to do on a day-to-day -day basis and their pain points. And so that's how our stakeholder uh, population was developed. Yeah. Were they pretty united in what they were looking for? Or did you have some groups of stakeholders that wanted one thing and another group wanted another? They were all united in that they wanted information mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted consistent information and they wanted timely information. So that was the unified side of it. The stakeholders uh, that wanted to have to do the lease of the processing uh, and anyone who's in executive management, I apologize if this is an indictment. The executive management wanted to do as little work as possible. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, the staff was, uh, the processes and everything that needed to be done, they were the ones differing in uh, executive management. I just want it when I want it. Staff wanted to work through the meticulous uh, this is what it takes to get there. So that's where any differences arose. Yeah. Any lessons learned for that process that would help the audience or you're willing to share? Not willing to share, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, in looking at or talking with our stakeholders, uh, level setting with them very early on that uh, 
it's going to have to be a phased approach to get them. Uh, we can't go from the Flintstones to the Jetsons overnight. It's going to be an iterative process in level setting with them. Uh, the excitement, and part of it's, I guess, uh, Abby and Deloitte's fault in that they were so good about getting things turned around so quick. Mm -hmm. The expectation was that anything they wanted could be turned around just as quick. So, yeah. uh, so I, lessons learned not to, uh, not to deliver, continue to, to promise, but uh, under promise and over deliver. <laughs> You bring up an interesting point, though. As you're going through the requirements, you have then that ability to hopefully set the expectation of, of how this new solution is going to be delivered. Was there a discussion with them about Agile? It sounds like there, there was, that, hey, you may not get everything on day one. Well, and again, it may be a little different uh, in other agencies, but we, Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, was introduced to Agile for the first time uh, within during this project. Mm -hmm. So the cascade or waterfall was the norm or tradition with all implementations previously. So the concept of uh, modification or change on the fly was not easily absorbed. It was absorbed by the people working on the project, but it was not uh, as easily absorbed by management. Uh, but it's now, once we started making modifications or changes, then that increased the expect, oh, you can do this, or, yeah. so that, that did change the, uh, the desire. The bar got up. The bar got raised a little higher. So the expectations, uh, things that we knew we needed to do or wanted to do for staff to be able to do their day-to-day -day, sort of got pushed to the back in order to deliver what the stakeholders knew could be done based on the system. Yeah. So Jasmine, I have another one for you. So you've done your requirements. Mm -hmm. um, how did the evaluation, how was that conducted for the particular procurement? So initially we started out, the agency issued a uh, pricing request, mm -hmm. PR, um, through DIR, which Michael mentioned um, a little earlier. Um, and I'll say through that process, we received four uh, responses. Um, two of those responses were more focused on document management or document systems, so it was alleviated um, from the beginning. Um, and then the first, or there's other two solutions, one being Deloitte and the other being another um, entity, um, proposed, um, you know, scalable, you know, a solution, which, you know, one we've chosen to go with. Um, but it's just the things that Deloitte could, brought, the, what Deloitte could offer and provide that became an ultimate decision low code, um, something in the, you know, that we wouldn't have to configure easily in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so those were the things that stuck out. And was that reflected in how you uh, articulated your factors and sub-factors? I probably should know because I saw the solicitation Absolutely. we bid on it, but it's been a while ago. Um, if you could talk to that, you know, what factors were you looking at? Did you give importance to one over another? Um, what did we do, Michael? <laughs> Jasmine was actually the procurement lead and she's being very humble. So the requirements uh, were laid forth, uh, being able to have a library, being able to have uh, accessibility uh, to all the various aspects of the contract, the funding, everything related to it, and also the capability of uh, providing standardized queries or standardized reports uh, meeting and matching all the things for our legislative budget board requirements. So all these things uh, were a factor, but the biggest factor was uh, usability, ease of usability with uh, complete transparency from all aspects within our agency. And when we do our acquisitions through DIR, uh, I need to take a step back and explain our DIR process. DIR puts out solicitations for a group of uh, commodities. Uh, entities respond to that solicitation and then DIR makes that selection of these entities that they say can meet these requirements. 
So that makes it easier when we as a state agency go to try to acquire those goods or services because we have what is considered a qualified pool. So our selection then is just based on what can provide best value to the state. And best value, again, as procurement professionals, you understand does not mean lowest cost. Best value means what we can get uh, that will provide the state the requirements regardless of the price but can meet the requirements and can do it in the time frame and in the best manner possible. And so the major criteria that we needed was configurability without having our IT be responsible. Our IT has scaled back from, they used to be made up of approximately 200 or so staff and they're now somewhere around 90 and our requirements are that any system that we purchase, we go COTS first, vendor hosted second, developed third, and the Appian Award Management Solution being provided uh, or being offered, provided uh, vendor hosting capability, low code configurability, which does not require our IT, and the other solution that was proposed, uh, pretty much it was written in, uh, whichever code it was written in, they would be in our pockets throughout in order to make any modifications or changes. So that, uh, that played a significant part in our decision. Yeah. So again, I'll have a few questions for you as well. So we've heard Texas's process. Um, are you seeing similar processes for acquiring software from other clients? Do you have best practices? Thing is, you've gone through the evaluation process. You must have certain ways of acquiring it that you prefer more than others. You think are more streamlined. Well, it's been really interesting to observe um, sort of a shift. A um, couple of trends I'm seeing. One is phased approaches, mm -hmm. uh, where you down select. Um, so that you, you know, that gives less to have to look at. And it sounds like you had a little bit of that actually based on um, what you were describing in terms of the four vendors went down to two and, yeah. um, and then even DIR was a starting point. So phased approaches, either starting with things like past performance and turning, you know, say pro prove that you know how to do this and then we're gonna down select. I really like um, where the demonstration is early. Mm -hmm. You know, do I like the look and feel of the software? Um, is it something I think I can imagine using? Um, I like when, um, and you, you talked about your stakeholders, I like when the end users are involved right up front. Um, you know, at my experience implementing contract writing systems for the last three decades, uh, the most successful ones are where the end user is involved early and often throughout the process. Um, and so that, that, you know, so when they're involved in the procurement, that's, that's a really cool thing too. Yeah, yeah I think um, you're mentioning trying it, down selecting. I think you can learn a lot working with that company, even on a limited engagement, even if you're only working for a couple months. You're making requests of them. You're seeing those requests reflected in your software very quickly. I think we've seen a lot of success for, for customers taking that method. Yeah, and I think too, because you, there's the what, right? There's the solution, but then there's the how, and that's where those of us that are system integrators are gonna have a different, you know, slightly different flavor. Um, just philosophically about how, how we view the projects and how we you know, view our role relative to our clients. Um, and, and I think you're going to tee up this question, so I'll go ahead and answer it. But part of the reason I think that Texas was Are you so self moderating now? Yeah, 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 I decided okay. That's okay. I was done with you. <laughs> um, this is streamlining. <laughs> The, uh, the, the advantage, and I, you talked about at, that being early for you in Agile, so we actually teed up, right? We did a training class right up front, what does that mean, Agile? Um, and, and what are your roles? And you know, philosophically, we like to maximize client involvement. You, we invite, you know, invite clients to every single ceremony that they'd like to be part of in the Agile. And, and these guys participate in our daily scrums. I didn't want them ever to feel like we were doing anything um, that wasn't transparent and, you know, to identify if we were off course early um, and often and be able to get that input and um, I, I just, I can't, I can't do waterfall again, right? Yep. Never. That's the takeaway from this. If we, if we take away anything, it's right. we can't Agile. do waterfall again. Right. 
So I just noticed on the timer that we're already at 30 minutes, which seems ridiculous. I think we just feel like we just started. Um, but if we have a moment, are there any questions from the audience? Because I promised that we would have some Q&A, and I don't want to let you down. Anybody with a question? All right, Randall. So how, how did you like the agile process to start with? Because a lot of people say, oh, this is not what we're used to. And then when you get involved, you start succeeding. Um, it's just unbelievable because the iterations and being able to see presentations. So you tell me, tell, tell everyone, what, what were your thoughts first? And then what did you think? I'll, I'll have to be a little transparent. Um, initially, I'm used to the traditional waterfall and um, all the other approaches. So. Adapting to Agile, I was a little resistant at first, but again, it's been eye-opening. It's been, you, you can adjust with the change that is the change. And so, um, it's this is the only way to go from now. I mean, like Gil mentioned, being involved in those daily scrums, getting in the meat of it, being a part of the whole process has actually done, done wonders. So, it's Agile. <laughs> and from my perspective, uh, I've, on, I've been with DPS now two years prior to joining DPS, I had used an agile approach and uh, my project management part of it was trained in agile. But once it was introduced at DPS, it's the only way that we do projects moving forward and it's actually our, we've modified our procurement process to have an agile procurement process. It's no longer uh, cascading, so it's, uh, it's, absolutely the only way to go, the best way to go. The uh, waterfall is just what it is, bureaucratic. And I think the most effective way to do things in government now is less bureaucratic and uh, more adaptive. And agile is the only way to do that, so. Any other questions? We've got a, a few more. Uh, was, was the agile process implemented from top down or it was implemented from bottom up. I think there was another one. Mm -hmm. Did you start with the Appian um, federal contract management solution and then build upon that, or did you build everything in the open environment? So did you start with a solution, or did you build it sort of from the platform up? Correct. Yeah. So you, you all purchased the award management solution. We purchased the award management solution, which was the federal, it was based on the federal and the configuration. Uh, it was interesting because the project team that uh, Deloitte and Appian uh, had working with us, we were their, I believe, their first state uh, customer. So the terminology, we had to have a translator for a little while. Uh, you know, each time <laughs> we were interacting, uh, they would say something and Jasmine would look at me, I'd look at Jasmine and, and then after we had to translate it, we, oh, that's what we call this. So that's, that's where, it, uh, where it happened. We actually had a former Na uh, Marine Corps contracting officer um, was our functional lead and God bless him. Um, he, he took a copy of the Texas procurement regs. Yeah. God, I don't know. Yeah. Must have looking. I don't know what was going on. I mean, who wouldn't that enjoy that read? Are you saying we wouldn't? Oh enjoy that? my God! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank God he did. That's all I'm going to say is because it was it was a huge because things uh, you use the term contract monitor. Right. That's that's not a typical federal term, right? So. Anything else? Did I miss anybody around the podium? I got a blind spot over here on the left. Oh, one in the back. Our organization has seen an immediate benefit. It's, uh, there's having access to data right away has uh, alleviated a lot of concerns. The, our stakeholders' uh, questions, and with, with COVID uh, changing the whole business paradigm, uh, and having to 
have access to information electronically. This has uh, this has been an eye opener for them, and it's uh, actually it's actually uh, well. I guess the best way to say it, we have awards quarterly and annually for. Uh, ideas or for systems or for improvement. And these awards are given from our executive management. And as a result of the work and the implementation and development that Jasmine did on the system, she received what's called our Chief's Award, which is. Uh, he promised he was going to do this. Yeah, and I said I wasn't going to do this. Uh, <laughs> she received our Chief's Award because the, uh, all the chiefs were able to look at and see what the system, what the information, and it's, uh, Jasmine gets regular accolades from staff because there's, it's cut down the amount of phone calls to them, and it's also provided the visibility and accuracy, or just the transparency in our information. It's sort of putting me out of a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll piggyback. I'll piggyback off of Michael, um, just to having a single book repository for just all of our information. So not only, not only are you alleviating the questions, but you're not in SharePoint, you're not on the P drive, you're not in this document. You have a single repository for all information that can be consolidated and answered in one. Yeah. So that's the benefit as well. If you'd like to embarrass Michael, we can cut off his mic for a second. Please. You can just have free reign. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna end it on that though. That was a great well, there's question. there's a question here. One, one last, okay. The, uh, the system itself where uh, we do not look at their touch points in their activity. We, the system, because it's an open system, we just look at the outcome, the finished product. But we do have uh, other ways of monitoring uh, and our best way of monitoring our contract monitor or manager's performance is by complaints. So <laughs> whenever we get a complaint, we know that something's gone wrong. Uh, but it, it's, we don't use the system as uh, in any way to monitor activity. We look at it just to monitor the end product. You could though, right? No, you, you absolutely could. Certainly could. could. You absolutely yeah. could. I mean, it, the process-based solution um, that, you know, and with the process mining, you could absolutely do it fact-based, right? I mean, you, um, it's, the, the goal, I think, would be to design the solution so that it was streamlined enough that hopefully that you didn't need to use it as for punitive purposes, right? right? But rather, you know, where does this person need help? Right. And absolutely, I mean, it's there to do that, but in order to ensure uh, adoption and use, we wanted to allow, we wanted them to look at the system as the go-to place, not as a place where they're going to wait to put something in, but a place that they're going to use. So uh, for now, until the system is completely mature within the agency, we're, we're given benevolence for any errors, but there, there is going to be a time once the maturity is achieved that it will use it to monitor uh, activity, but until that time, it's early adoption and comfortable and early use is what we're striving for. So I think we'll take any other questions. I'm, I'm, I'm way over. So, but I promise you, we will stick around. Anybody like to come up and ask, as long as it's okay with you guys. Well, Tom's happy. Uh, yes, we <laughs> More than happy to remain up here and answer some more questions. Starting right here. Starting right here. I want to thank you guys again. Yeah. Uh, always love talking about your, your application. I think it's a great use case. The thing we didn't mention, though, was deployed in three months, which is it's amazing.
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So again, thank you, thank you all, and thank you guys. And if you'd like to come up and talk, or more questions will be open.